The Colosseum is a mega monument, one of the seven wonders of the world, and on everyone's bucket list of places to visit. It has been imitated, but it is by a long shot the largest amphitheater in the Roman world. Along with the Roman Forum and Palatine Hill, the Colosseum is at the center of our collective human consciousness. When we think of the history of the world, Rome or the Roman Empire, this area was at the epicenter of it all and part of one of the greatest civilizations on planet Earth. So you're probably wondering what you should not miss while exploring this juggernaut of ancient history. It's easy to walk around a monument and miss important details. Be sure to stay until the very end because this list will help you make the most of one of Rome's most important sites. The Colosseum is in Rome at the center of the city, and it's at the end of Via dei Fori Imperiali, or the Road of the Imperial Forum. It stands in Piazza del Colosseo, named after the monument. The area is almost wholly pedestrian, except for the road on the south and southeastern side of the building, named Via Celio Fibena. The pedestrian area of the Colosseum, Palatine Hill, and Roman Forum is slightly larger than a square kilometer, which is somewhat less than half a square mile. With so many amazing things to see of such historical significance, we believe that you should have a plan of attack to increase understanding and maximize your fun. Whether you're visiting on your own or jumping on one of our tours, here are the top things to see at the Colosseum, Roman Forum, and Palatine Hill. The Flavian Amphitheater Plaque the Colosseum is only a nickname commonly used for this structure. The real name of the building is the Flavian Amphitheater, named after the dynasty that built it. Don't miss the plaque attached to the middle ring of the Colosseum directly facing the Temple of Venus. This plaque reads the name of the structure, Amphitheater Flavium, and a few of the Pope's names who were essential in preserving the building. The word amphitheater comes from the Greek amphi, meaning two or both, or in this case, two-sided. Since the amphitheater stood next to the giant, 102 and a half foot tall colossal bronze statue of Nero, the nickname Colosseo or Colosseum eventually stuck. The Outer Ring of the Colosseum The first thing you'll notice when you get closer to the Colosseum is the multiple rings that support the seating. The remaining portion of the outer ring will face you as you walk out of the metro station, which puts this building into perspective. Three sets of arches stand on top of one another to form the 159 foot tall outer ring. When they completed the Colosseum, this ring circled the entire structure. Still, after a thousand years without repair or attention, it fell in an earthquake in 1349. 80 archways made up the outer ring and each was numbered and assigned to spectators to find their seats, just like stadiums today. This efficient engineering allowed the building to fill up quickly and empty in 15 minutes. 76 entrances were for public use and had numbers. The other unmarked four gates had different uses. One gate was for the emperor, one for vestal virgins, and the other two were for the gladiators. To learn more details and stories like this, check out the links to our blog in the details below. The Landscape and Gardens of the Palatine Hill the Palatine Hill is one of Rome's seven founding hills and is the first hill according to the legend of how Rome was founded. According to the story, Romulus and Remus were found by a shepherd at the base of the Palatine Hill. On a hot Roman day, this area is a calm respite from the crowds at the Colosseum. So I'm heading up to the Palatine Hill now and it's definitely a different landscape up here. It's, it's green, you can feel the breeze. It certainly feels like the place where patricians and rich people would live. The Triumphal Arch of Septimius Severus. This monument is a testament to Rome's dominance in the ancient world and is one of the giant arches built in Rome in 203 AD. At this point in history, Rome was already in decline and past its golden years. The Emperor Septimius Severus had this arch constructed to commemorate his victory over the Parthians, which is modern-day Iran. The arch was richly decorated and dedicated to Severus's two sons, Carcalla, who eventually became Emperor, and Geta. The Via Sacra 
The road running down the middle of the Roman Forum is the Via Sacra, or the Sacred Way. This was the main street of ancient Rome. During the triumphal marches after a big victory, which happened often during Roman times, you'd start the journey down the Via Sacra into the city. One of the best things about this road is that it's an instant time machine. You can still see the wear and tear from Roman times on this ancient stone road. The Mamertine Prison Now the Mamertine Prison isn't technically part of the Roman Forum, but it is located at the end of the Roman Forum and at the bottom of the Capitoline Hill. More importantly, it's an important part of the Christian story right here in Rome. According to Christian tradition, this is where the most famous first century Christian leaders, St. Peter and St. Paul, were actually imprisoned. Religious or not, this small archaeological site is worth a visit. The prison is downstairs, very dark, and a great place for reflection and contemplation. If you're a Christian, you can't miss seeing where the Prince of the Apostles, the first Pope, was imprisoned. The oldest prison in Rome that held St. Peter links this area to the rock upon which the church was built. The archaeological site uses an audiovisual guide to highlight the small museum and the prison is downstairs. The Temple of Julius Caesar Across from the Temple of Vesta is the Temple of Julius Caesar. In its heyday, this was the centerpiece of the Roman Forum. The temple was dedicated to Julius Caesar and constructed by his adopted son, Augustus. Julius Caesar was the first Roman deified after his death and the first to be buried in the Forum itself. This was a huge honor because nobody could be buried within the city limits for hygienic reasons. Julius Caesar, one of the all-time great Romans, was assassinated in the Curia of Pompeii in 44 BC, and he was cremated here in the Forum in front of the Regia. Soon after his death, Agosto built a temple for him right on his spot, and this is where you can sort of recall all the legends and history of one of the greatest Romans that ever lived, Julius Caesar. The Temple of Saturn the temple that we see today dates from the 4th century AD, and we know this because the inscription on it reads that the Senate rebuilt it after a great fire. The original temple that stood on this very same spot was built in the year 497 BC. Today, we only have the podium on the left which the temple stands on and eight massive columns of granite and marble. While you have to use your imagination, you can see that this temple was once a great and revered place of worship. The most famous events associated with the god Saturn is the major festival on December 17th, the Saturnalia. In the Julian calendar, December 25th marked the winter solstice. The Sol Invictus was also celebrated on that date. Over time, these major Roman festivals merged, and that's how Christmas was transformed into what we know today. Yes, historians and scholars agree that Roman events that took place right here shape the Christian calendar that affects us today. The Arch of Constantine Flavius Valerius Constantinus, or Constantine the Great to most of us, was one of the all-time great emperors of Rome. A triumphal arch was built and dedicated to him for his victory over Maxentius at the Battle of the Malvian Bridge in 312 AD. The arch was completed in record time since they recycled materials from other buildings and arches. The night before the pivotal battle, Constantine saw a vision of a cross leading him into victory. No doubt he was influenced by his already Christian mother. Constantine then converted to Christianity and became the first Christian emperor of Rome. The next year, in 313, the Edict of Milan legalized Christianity throughout the Roman Empire. I'm standing in front of the Arch of Constantine, which is something you definitely need to see when you visit the Colosseum and the Roman Forum because it actually stands in between the two. And what would happen is armies would march down from the Circus Maximus and then march through the arch up and through the Roman Forum. This arch was built in 312 to celebrate an important victory that the first Christian Emperor Constantine won in 312. The arch was completed in 315. Terrazza Belvedere 
For epic views of the Roman Forum, don't miss the views from Terrazza Belvedere. So I'm standing on top of Terrazza Belvedere here on the Palatine Hill, which gives you not only great views of the Roman Forum, but also of Rome right behind me. So there's the Capitoline Museum, the back of it, the back of Piazza Venezia. You also get really good views of Trajan's Market and Trajan's Forum, but right below us, is the Roman Forum. So you just get the sense of patricians living up here, looking down onto the market and seeing the busy life in ancient Rome. The Gate of Death. No visit to the Colosseum is complete without walking through the Gate of Death. Officially named the Libitinarian Gate, it is where the bloodied, dead, beat up bodies were carried out of the Colosseum. The word stems from libitinarius, which translates to undertaker in Latin, and that is interessante. This is another one of those exclusive areas of the Colosseum, so be sure to check out our tours of the Colosseum of this area. The links are in the description below. The Colosseum Underground Labyrinth Yes, underneath the Colosseum, there is a complex labyrinth of tunnels where gladiators and event organizers prepared for the games. It really is one of those special and defining features of the Colosseum. And that's why this is one of the hottest tickets in town that's commonly sold out. The underground was a very complex area, and you can even see a reconstruction of one of the elevators. So imagine 500 workers down here, in addition to all of the gladiators and animals, no natural light, and the chaos right above you. 32 trap doors go on at any moment, and just the sound of mayhem. I, it's just an extraordinary experience uh, to be down here. You know, you just get a different, different perspective. And, and that's what travel is all about, right? Getting a different perspective. The view of the Circus Maximus. As you walk across the Palatine Hill, step inside the walls of the palaces and towards the Circus Maximus, the oldest and biggest public space in Rome. As a sports fan, it's incredible to see the magnitude of one of the biggest sports stadiums ever built. It's also hard not to think of Hollywood epics like Ben-Hur with chariots racing around the giant Egyptian obelisk which coincidentally now stands next to the Basilica of San Giovanni in Laterano. You'll soon find yourself standing on a massive balcony which was part of the structure of the Temple of Apollo and have the best view of the Circus Maximus. One of the best viewpoints from the Palatine Hill completely overlooks the entire Circus Maximus. And from this viewpoint, you really get a sense of the grandeur and the scale of one of the largest stadiums ever built. Imagine 250,000 people packed into that thing watching the chariot races go by. And this is where you really start to take in the glory of ancient Rome. The Arch of Titus. This monument attracts the attention of people from all over the world, including people from Palestine, Jerusalem, Israel, and of Jewish descent, because it depicts a major event in Jewish history. During the time of Roman occupation in Judea, in the year 70 CE, the Romans crushed a Jewish rebellion and destroyed the Temple of Jerusalem. Beyond the horror story of Roman war, this arch helps connect some historical dots. It verifies that Titus's campaign actually happened and that he returned victoriously. The detailed reliefs on the arches illustrate the scenes of triumph and have captured loot and booty that Titus plundered as he celebrated with his father Vespasian. That victory march traveled over the very spot which the arch is located on today. So the Via Sacra, the main road of ancient Rome, not only runs through the Forum, but it also runs through the Arch of Titus, which is one of three arches left in ancient Rome. And it's really sort of the granddaddy of them all because in 81 AD, Emperor Domitian built this to commemorate a victory by Titus and Vespasian in Judea, where they quelled a rebellion of about 60,000 Jews. And in the details of the frieze, you'll be able to see all the loot and everything they brought back to ancient Rome from that victory. The arena floor of the Colosseum. 
Imagine being able to walk in the same area where brutal animals and crazy gladiators walked almost 2,000 years ago. Trust me, stepping foot in the center of the arena floor is something you will never forget. When you're out in the middle of the arena floor, you get a 360 degree view of the enormity and power of ancient Rome. It's the best place to experience the grandeur of the Colosseum. The arena floor is one of the exclusive areas of the Colosseum. It's difficult to get tickets to this, but luckily you can come with us. We offer tours that include exclusive access to the arena floor and the Roman Forum and Palatine Hill. Can't believe this place is 2,000 years old. 2,000 year old sports arena. Gosh. I mean, the word arena actually means sand. And that's one of the beauties of being on this, you know, reconstructed floor is because you just get a better sense of what it was like from this perspective to be one of the gladiators or to be one of the people fighting down here. Well, that wraps up our time at the Colosseum, Palatine Hill and Roman Forum. I'm Angel Castellanos for the tour guide. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe and ring that bell so you can find our next video. Happy travels.